So you got a CFS upgrade kit for your K1 series machine. Welcome to the multicolor world of 3D printing. But before you can get to multicolor printing, you're gonna have to get that CFS upgrade kit installed and I'm gonna help you do it. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through kind of step-by-step -step on how I installed mine on my machine. And we'll talk about a couple of roadblocks that I hit and what I did to solve them. So with that said, let's get to the install. So here's what you'll have in your kit. And I know what you're thinking. It's a lot of parts and yeah, it kind of is, but don't let it get confusing. Just keep it all laid out nice and neat and step by step and you'll be fine. All right. So first off, you're going to want to take off this LIDAR right here on the left side. That's going to be two screws right above here. And then once you get the LIDAR off, you're going to have one screw on this side. And then you'll have, uh, let's see, one screw on this side. That's just to get this, uh, the housing off. All right, as you can see, I've got LiDAR, two screws, and now this is just going to pull up at the bottom, kind of move the chain off the way a little bit, push the chain back, and then you'll just lift up on the top, and it, it just comes right off like that. Now, when it does come off, you just need to be mindful of the fan connection right here. You need to undo that. Now mine has an extra mod here and that's why these wires are here. Yours will not have this. And you need to unplug your printer before you start doing all this. Do not start it like I did. Okay, so on this side of the extruder, you're gonna have one here, one here. And so you're going to go ahead and get these two off. You just got one on this side and that's going to be it for this side. So now it's going to be time to take off this little top piece here. I'm going to pop this off. That came off pretty good. <laughs> so as you can see, you got that off. So then you'll want to take the extruder out. You just lift it up out of there. And you are good to go. Well, you need to get it out like that. Okay, there you go. Now that motor's kind of heavy, so just set it down in there. Don't let it hang. All right. So you want the longer screw to go up at the top right. Because you're going to have a, a long screw and a short screw. So you want that long screw to go up at the top right. Yep. And then the short one to go over here at the bottom left. Alright, now that we got the extruder installed, now we have these two wires to deal with. Now this one, you're going to want to run right through here, through behind the boards. Let's see, you're going to want to go under. All right, so it looks like on this one, you're going to want those two little notches on the outside. Just so you don't have to flip it like I had to. And this is very tricky to get in. Okay, now this one right here. That one. Is going to connect that one's going to connect right there you have one two three is the top one the very last one okay now it's time for the extruder motor cover you're going to swap that out with this new one All right, now you're gonna want to reconnect that fan and then it's time to put the front case back on. So you'll just put it on the same way you took it off, put the screws back in. And then the next, you're gonna wanna delete this filament sensor back here in the back. You're gonna take it off and basically you're not gonna have it anymore. So just stick it to the side. It's got two bolts right there. Same thing with this little connector right here. You're gonna wanna take it off top and bottom pull it out and then actually pull out the PTFE tube right out the side right there just yank it out 
Now this is the double-ended fitting that goes on the back of the printer and I'll show you where that goes. It goes right here. There, you're gonna have to find the hole. It's it's not like plain as day on mine. At least it wasn't. And you'll want to undo these belt tensioner screws here because you're gonna install the other piece that came with your kit. It's gonna go right here. This piece right here. You're gonna install it right back there. And just make sure you have the right one. It's marked B. That's the one that you want to install if you have the K1 Max. And that's gonna be the same thing for this part. It'll be marked as well. And if you have the K1 Max, make sure you install the right one. Uh, they'll be marked for you. So when installing the little diverter plate that you see right there, the long one that goes behind the build plate. So on mine, when I installed mine, after I got everything said and done, I raised and lowered my build plate and my build plate was snagging on that diverter. So I went ahead and had to uninstall my diverter. Now yours might fit perfectly, no big deal, but if you run into this issue, then you'll simply need to uninstall that diverter. And what I plan on doing is, I'm just gonna take a heat gun and heat up that long piece of plastic and just bend it over just slightly. That way I can go up and down on my bill plate without snagging on the diverter plate. Or another option is just leaving it out completely. Now, I don't recommend that because Creality, obviously they want that there for a reason. Now, me personally, I'm, I've left mine out for right now. You can do whatever you choose to do. The fix would be to heat it up, bend it, and make it make sure that it fits properly. Now you've got the stepper motor diverter cover right here, and it's just one screw right on top of the motor. Really simple. Now this guy right here is a little bit complicated. Now it might not be for you, but for me, I had to put it together, take it apart a few times just to make sure that I had it correct. So watch carefully, make sure you have the orientation correct and make sure that you have the spring installed correctly because if you don't have it installed correctly, whenever your build plate goes to move up and down, this little hopper box right here will probably be in the way and hit your build plate. So if that's the case, then you know you got this wrong and you need to take it apart and start over. So yeah, just pay attention right here with the orientation of the spring and how I'm putting it up against the back of the plastic right there, pushing it up with my finger and then wedging it and then kind of pressing down and holding it, making sure it doesn't pop back out. And then I'm sliding in that uh, screw right there. And then once you get the screw in, you're good to go. You could just tighten it down and I tighten it snug. I mean, I didn't want to do it too tight because I want that to move freely. But yeah, just once you get it tightened down, just, uh, you know, check the movement and make sure that you don't have it tightened so hard that it's not going to spring back and forth, obviously. But yeah, you should have good movement just like that right there. And then you'll be ready to go. So next, you're going to want to take off these bolts right here on top of the Z rods. You're gonna have uh, two of them up here. You'll get those two out. And then this is where your hopper box is going to install, just like that. You're gonna slide it on top. Now your cable chain might be in your way. Uh, they did supply a little bracket to relocate that. I kind of wedged mine in there without relocating it, but uh, yeah. So you could just do it like that. Mine worked out perfect. And as you can see, it moves perfect. Now we're pretty much home free home right here. These are just little uh, Z rod covers that go on the left and right Z rod right here. Uh, they're a super simple install. Uh, they just kind of wedge in there and then you just push them down. That's what I found fits the best. And after that, you'll be ready to move on to firmware updating. So when it comes to installing your new firmware, so I did hit one roadblock when doing this. So typically when installing firmware onto your device, you'll just put it on the flash drive. You'll insert it into the USB port of your printer and then turn on your printer and it'll automatically recognize whatever's on that flash drive, right? Well, mine wouldn't recognize it. It just would not auto upload the firmware. So what I had to do was I went ahead and took that firmware and I copied it to a whole nother flash drive all by itself. I basically just took the firmware file only and took it over to another flash drive, put it on that flash drive by itself, not inside of a folder or nothing. I just put that firmware onto a flash drive by itself. I stuck it in the printer. I turned on the printer and then it auto updated and it kind of solved that problem for me. So if you hit that roadblock, then that's the fix for you. 
So once you've installed your firmware and ran your self checks, it's going to give you this option right here to upgrade to multicolor. So you'll go ahead and tap that, hit settings, and then the printer's going to return to home and then it's going to give you an option to set your purge coordinate settings. And let me show you how you're going to go ahead and do that. So basically right here, you're going to set where your print head is going to go purge itself at back there in that hopper box. And you're basically just fine tuning where the head is going to go to do its purging at. And you're going to set it and you just want to look and make sure that your uh, print nozzle is lined up perfectly in that V shape right there inside that hopper box. And so you can you know coordinate it however you need left right up down forward back whatever you need to do and then once you get it perfect where you think it should be then you go ahead and set it now it's time to connect your cfs right here at your usb port and hook it up back here all right so over here on the back of the cfs here's the connections that you're going to want to make sure that you have all right coming from the front of the machine you're going to have this long cable right here and as you can see, this is running to the front of the machine. I've got it plugged in right here, right? And now you have another little six prong cable right there. That's gonna plug into your buffer at the top of the buffer over there. You got that? Now you can mount your buffer wherever you want to. I chose to mount mine on the back of the CFS. Okay, there's your power and data communications all settled. Now you do need a power cable going into the CFS itself. That's where this will plug in right here. I've got mine tied on right here so it doesn't come out and you can run yours however you want. Okay, now for PTFE tubes, you'll need one tube coming out of here. You can choose any four of these. It does not matter which one you choose, just pick one. You'll come out of there and you'll make a decent sized loop and go directly into the back of the CFS. Now, as you can see here, the PTFE tube coming off of the print head, it's coming out here. It comes directly out and it's going to go into your little connector here that you added previously in the video. So you'll have that one and then this one right here, this one you'll continue out of there and it'll come, you'll make a decent sized loop and that's going to go into the single side of your buffer right there. Now you just don't want to make too sharp of a turn right here you don't want to have it like that because then that's going to create problems you want to give it some room to be able to come out of there and not get in a bind that's the that's the biggest part about this is creating loops that don't create binds now once you've got all of that connected this should turn from a zero to a one that simply means this is cfs number one now, if you had several CFSs hooked up, this would go one, your other CFS would show it two, the other one three, four, so on and so forth, right? And then this is your temp, and then this is obviously gonna be your humidity rate. Uh, and then the white lights on here, these are just gonna let you know that those hubs are good to go and you don't have any problems. So I've got two rolls of filament in there, and so this one's good, that one's good, these are blank, and you know, that's what it is. Now you're ready to basically sink your filaments and print out a benchy. Now don't be disappointed if your first benchy kind of comes out rough because mine did as well. You're going to have to do some fine tuning and just figure out what's going to work for you and your printer and your settings, filament. I mean, there's a bunch of variables here. So get your benchy going and see what you come up with. Well, that's the install guys. So I hope that helped you out. And if it did, make sure you subscribe, like, and as always, stay ready to 3D print. We'll see you in the next one.